hello everyone after so many days i am again back with one of my new videos and today's topic is faiths of pyruvate under anaerobic condition before going into the detail of this topic i would like to explain you about what is anaerobic condition so a condition where oxygen is absent that condition is called as anaerobic condition whereas the condition where oxygen is present is known as aerobic condition under this aerobic condition pyruvate enters fermentation cycle and it can be of two types and they are first one is lactic acid fermentation and second one is ethanol fermentation so before going to lactic acid fermentation in a little bit detail i would like to explain you about the fermentation as a definition so fermentation is a metabolic process that produces chemical changes in organic substrate through the action of enzymes in biochemistry it is narrowly defined as the extraction of energy from carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen in our next slide i will talk about lactic acid fermentation in a little bit detail so let's start lactic acid fermentation is a metabolic process by which glucose or other six carbon sugars also disaccharides of six carbon sugars such as sucrose or lactose are converted into cellular energy and the metabolite lactate which is lactic acid in solution like aqueous solution the reduction of pyruvate in this pathway is catalyzed by the enzyme named lactose dehydrogenase which forms the isomer of lactate of ph7 delta g is equal to 25.1 kJ per mole which is a quite high or large standard free energy change so the overall equilibrium of the reaction strongly favors the lactate fermentation so there are three types of lactic acid fermentations they are homo fermentative process hetero fermentative process and by by feedum pathway so before going into the homo fermentative process in a little bit detail i would like to give you a little bit detail in how pyruvate is getting converted into lactate and what is the reaction so basically one pyruvate molecule is being converted into l lactate with the help of the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase where one nadh molecule is getting converted into nad plus so now we will come to the topic homo fermentative process homo fermentative bacteria convert glucose to two molecules of lactate and use this reaction to perform substrate level phosphorylation to make two molecules of atp in our previous lecture about glycolysis we have already read about substrate level phosphorylases and again i will give you the definition of it substrate level phosphorylation is a reaction where atp molecules are being produced or generated so now look we will look into the reaction as a whole of a homo fermentative reaction so one glucose molecule two adp molecule along with two inorganic phosphate is producing two lactate molecule and two atp molecule in case of homo fermentative it means that lactic acid is the principal metabolite without production of gas and in this case this gas is co2 and flavor compounds now we will look into some example of homo fermentative bacteria so example of homo fermentative bacteria is lactobacillus bulgaricus and lactobacillus delbrueckii etc next we will come to hetero fermentative process hetero fermentative bacteria produce less lactate and less atp but produce several other end product hetero fermentative process the reaction is one glucose molecule plus one atp along with one inorganic phosphate is giving one lactate molecule one ethanol molecule co2 and one atp so here you can look into the difference between homo fermentative and hetero fermentative process in homo fermentative there is no production of the co2 gas hello everyone after so many days i am again back with one of my new videos and today's topic is faiths of pyruvate under anaerobic conditions before going into the detail of this topic i would like to explain you about what is anaerobic condition so a condition where oxygen is absent that condition is called as anaerobic condition whereas the condition where oxygen is present is known as aerobic condition 
under this aerobic cut. Next, we will move on to bifidum pathway. This pathway is specifically seen into one particular bacteria and that is known as bifidobacterium bifidum. This bacteria utilizes a lactic acid fermentation pathway to produce more ATP than either homolactic fermentation or heterolactic fermentation. So let's look into the reaction once. So two molecules of glucose plus five molecules of ATP along with five molecules of inorganic phosphate is giving rise to three molecules of acetate, two molecules of lactate and five ATP. So if you look into three processes all together, you can see we, if we were getting two ATP in case of homo fermentative process and one ATP in case of hetero fermentative process, but in this bifidum pathway, we are getting five ATP. So maximum number of ATP are being produced in this bifidum pathway. Next, we will move on to Cori cycle. The Cori cycle, also known as the lactic acid cycle, named after its discoveries, Carl Ferdinand Cori and Genti Cori is a metabolic pathway in which lactate produced by anaerobic glycolysis in muscles is transported to liver and converted to glucose which then returns to the muscles and is cyclically metabolized back to lactate. So as we are reading the anaerobic phase of pyruvate, this Cori cycle which is also known as lactic acid cycle, it is also comes under that as this is one of the major fate of pyruvate under anaerobic condition. Let's look into this Cori cycle in a little bit detail. So this Cori cycle usually happens between muscle and liver via the blood stream. In case of muscle, glucose molecule is first converted into 2-pyruvate where the process of glycolysis where 2 ATP is being generated and then this pyruvate is being converted into 2-lactate. Then this 2-lactate via bloodstream it will go to the liver and this 2-lactate it will again be converted back to 2-pyruvate and these 2-pyruvate will convert it back to glucose with the help of the process gluconeogenesis where 6 ATP consumptions will be there. So this is the overall Cori cycle. Next we will come to significance of Cori cycle. So the cycle's importance is based on preventing lactic acidosis during anaerobic condition in the muscle. However, normally before this happens, the lactic acid is moved out of the muscle and into the liver. This cycle is important in ATP production an energy source during muscle extraction, the end of muscle extraction allows the Cori cycle to function more effectively. This repays the oxygen depth so that so both the electron transport chain and citric acid cycle which is also known as TCA cycle can provide energy at optimum effectiveness. The Cori cycle is a much more important source of substrate for gluconeogenesis than food. The contribution of Cori cycle lactate to overall glucose production increases with fasting duration before plateauing, specifically after 12, 20 and 40 hours of fasting by human volunteers. Gluconeogenesis accounts for 41%, 71% and 92% of glucose production but the contribution of Cori cycle lactate to gluconeogenesis is 18%, 35% and 36% respectively. The remaining glucose production comes from point break protein breakdown, muscle glycogen and glycerol from lipolysis. Along with this significance, I would like to tell you about another significance which is very important in case of glucose metabolism. So this Cori cycle mainly happens in our body when we are doing heavy exercises or in case of an athlete who is doing a 100 meter sprint. So skeletal muscle need a rapid burst of high energy. So in that case, they carry out glycolysis at a very rapid rate. And glycolysis need NAD+. In my previous lecture about glycolysis, I have taught you that in a step where glycerol D3-phosphate is being converted into 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate, in that step 1-NAD+, is also getting converted into NADH plus H+. So now when continuous glycolysis is happening in a rapid rate, 
NADH, NADH need to be restored into NAD plus. So for that uh, NAD plus restoration, this pyruvate to lactate uh, formation is very important. When we were reading lactic acid fermentation, then only I have told, I have discussed uh, the reaction of how a pyruvate molecule is getting converted into a lactate, how a NADH is being regenerated into NAD plus in that procedure. So hence pyruvate is converted to lactate to release the NAD plus which is very very important in to carry on glycolysis at a rapid rate. So conversion of pyruvate to lactate serves dual purpose. It supplies the NAD plus for the glycolysis to go on and send to liver via bloodstream. Next we will come to oxygen depth. What is oxygen depth? It is a cumulative deficit of oxygen available for oxidative metabolism that develops during periods of intense bodily activity and must be made good when the body returns to a rest. Again I would like to explain you this in a little bit. Basically when a Cori cycle occurs in case of muscle when glucose is getting converted to 2 lactate 2 ATP is being produced and in liver when a lactate is getting converted into glucose then 6 ATP consumption is happening so effect uh, so each round of Cori cycle system is deficient of 4 ATP so basically now system is in the ATP depth which can be recovered by intake of oxygen so in order to re recover those lost ATPs we breathe very fast to get more and more oxygen so that ETS or electron transport chain or cycle can proceed at faster pace and lo or lost ATPs can be produced. The amount of oxygen taken to recover these ATPs are called as oxygen depth. Next I will talk about ethanol fermentation. Ethanol fermentation also called alcohol fermentation is a biological process which converts sugar such as glucose, fructose and sucrose into cellular energy producing ethanol and carbon dioxide as byproducts because yeast performs this conversion in the absence of oxygen. Alcoholic fermentation is considered an anaerobic process. It also takes place in some species of fish including goldfish and carp where along with lactic acid fermentation it provides energy when oxygen is scarce. So now I would like to tell you about uh, this ethanol fermentation as a reaction how it occurs. So a molecule of pyruvate is being converted into acetaldehyde plus CO2 with the help of the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase. Then this acetaldehyde is being converted into ethanol with the help of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase where one NADH is getting converted into NAD+. So this was the overall ethanol fermentation. Now we will look into the application of lactose fermentation and ethanol fermentation. Lactose fermentation is used in the preparation of pickle, in preparation of fermented fish and in the preparation of sauerkraut and yogurt. Whereas ethanol fermentation is used in bread baking, in production of alcoholic beverages and in production of ethanol that is added to gasoline. So that's it for today guys. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, like the video and comment down below and share it with your friends.